Deputy Speaker, fellow members of Parliament, Honourable President, today I stand here an incredibly proud South African, a proud member of the National Assembly of Parliament and a very proud member of the Portfolio Committee of Public Enterprises, or as we call ourselves, Team South Africa. To the brave men and women of South Africa who, despite facing tremendous pressure, potential job loss, alienation from certain sectors, have still boldly spoken out against and exposed corruption, state capture, nepotism, cronyism, and mismanagement. To you all I say, thank you. Thank you on behalf of South Africa for your determination to look after the South African coffers and for your relentless patriotism. I particularly, though, want to single out an unsung hero of this tale. A man of such virtue, such bravery, so proud of his country, that when he was offered a bribe and propositioned with money, the likes of which we could only dream of in the case of winning the lotto, he said, no, I choose South Africa, I choose my country duty. To you, Advocate Venara, I say thank you. May the gods bless you and may our children learn how you helped, self, how you helped save South Africa being sold off piece by piece. You are, sir, a hero. Our state-owned entities are completely dysfunctional. They have been captured lock, stock and barrel. They are a source of great shame and a massive concern for our economy. The amount of money that has been siphoned off to various politicians, key players and the Gupta family is absolutely obscene. Deputy Speaker, I find it quite bizarre and more than a little disturbing that many of the key politicians are sitting alongside us in this very house today. We cannot deny that in these benches sit ministers who held secret meetings in Switzerland to decide the fate of certain mines and coal contracts to ESCOM. Certain ministers are alleged to have met with the Gupta family to take instructions regarding the composition of the boards of ESCOM, Danel, SAA, SA Express and Transnet, to name a few. Board members have claimed to have been summoned to ministers' houses to receive instructions. And most disturbing of all, an ex-board CEO of ESCOM has claimed to have been summoned to the ex-president's household and told by a fellow board member what the president wanted him to do in order to aid the Guptas. A minister in these very benches has been accused, and look, let's be honest, actually admitted to approaching the evidence leader of the state capture inquiry into ESCOM, offering him a substantial bribe, which was not accepted, to collapse the inquiry and, in fact, not even let it get started. I am quite sure that the president has to agree with me. This is not an acceptable situation. Our government must operate and function here in South Africa and not in the Oberai Hotel in Dubai. We cannot be expected to believe that the president's commitment to root out corruption and to stop state capture in its tracks until such time as he has given them their marching orders and they feel the full might of the law thrown at them. To be a member of parliament is a great honour. Let us re-earn the right to be called honourable members. Last week I took an early morning walk along the Seapoint Promenade. It's become very popular. In fact, it's quite the place to be seen these days. I uh, put my headphones on while I was contemplating just how close our SOEs came to complete collapse and a song by South African rock star Arno Carstens came on. It's a song called Emergency and, and the chorus goes like this. How long? Too long. This is an emergency. How long? Too long. This is an emergency. This is exactly the current state of our state-owned entities. We are in a state of emergency. Mr. President, we need more Pakamane Khadebes. We need more Jabu Mabuzas to walk in and take no prisoners. What happened at ESCOM is epic. It now needs to happen at Danel, Transnet, SAA, SA Express. 
The rich simply cannot keep getting richer while the poor become poorer. It is up to us to do this. South Africa, we have to do this. Speaker, through you, let me tell the President, we are here to help you. There is absolutely nothing wrong with South Africa that cannot be fixed with what is right in South Africa. South Africans are kind, we are brave, we are resilient, we are determined. South Africa, we have got this. It is now up to the President to follow through on him fixing his ministries, and he will have our un undivided, unwavering and full support in fixing SOEs. Deputy Speaker, as my closing remark, and again through you, if I leave our President with one thought, let this thought be this. Mr. President, on behalf of 50 more 4 million South Africans, I beg of you, leave this House today, walk straight into Minister Lynn Brown's office and say the following eight words to her. Minister Brown, you are the weakest link. Goodbye. Another one, Marfan.